So this time just scrying the lingua ignota word falskeen, which means seer, and really trying to be very still inside. Today hasn't been quite as good for scrying, um, but I think there's more that's going on that's uh, causing this, so, and that's okay. So the word seer, just briefly to distinguish it from the word for prophet, the sense I'm getting is a psychic and somebody who's not just necessarily just hearing the word of God, either channel, channeled through them or spoken to into their mind or being told to describe what they're seeing or perhaps speaking about the future or the past. A seer, it's much more, everything is sort of, it seems like it's very much in touch with spirit whether that's future, past, or present. And, but there is at the same time, this very heart connection to spirit, which of course would include uh, the divine, at least according to my own um, beliefs. And, And I'm getting this sense of something rising up. It's almost like a, uh, if you were to take like a Hot Wheels ramp that would go around, do a loop-de-loop, -loop, that sort of thing. Um, it's sort of like that. And I'm seeing that sort of go from like a, it's happening to me right now to let's rotate this away so you can see this way. And it's almost like a spiral. It's almost like it's in our DNA. Uh, so I guess there seems to be some kind of genetic component to it. But also there's, there's something about the person who is very much in tune with the patterns at this very um, intuitive level, spiritual level. A spiritual level, it's like they're getting the signal through the noise. And I'm just asking God if what else he would like to show me about this. And I'm just getting the sense that the best way to handle to be a seer is to, again, work on the heart. Because you're getting so much more extra noise, but the heart itself is very still. If, it's, if you are very still, it, it too is still. And you can get the most important information to tell somebody else that way. So there's a, a reminder to recharge, a reminder to, to allow yourself to be calm, to rest, all of the normal human things. And to ground. And I'm seeing just at the very end of this, the original vision, which was a tree, I'm seeing at the very top of this, there's a lot of light coming through, through the canopy. And it's like you need to, it's like going along the path is like, if you could imagine sort of the old, 1966 Batman and Robin where they would be walk be climbing this wall using ropes but it was really them just walking <laughs> with the camera turned to the side um but it's like that you know so if you were to climb the tree but literally you're just walking a path but the ha path happens to be a tree the main thing is to just recognize that you're following a light as it were right you are following what you are being allowed to see. And that as you do that, remember, you know, you're part of this greater experience, that symbol of the tree, 
you know, just like everyone who's gone before you, you know, you're part of this big world, as it were. And at the same time, you are following a light that is being shown from the heavens. And that it's almost best for you to just figure out your own pace in terms of what works and what doesn't for you. And to know that it, I mean, this, the tree is vast, so there's no, there's no rush, right? And the winds will shift and a different path may open in front of you, if that makes sense. You know, I mean, you're not, you're not going to go backwards on the tree and there's no falling down, but you know, there may be a knot you need to avoid or whatever in the tree or a branch. And you may only see that once the winds shift, the, the light can come in and show you, okay, not this. And it's just whatever you're being allowed to see. But the main thing is to take care of yourself. And to just continue to move forward in love and compassion towards both yourself, but also others. And that you don't have to have it all figured out. All right, so that's it.